Hello friends, welcome to this first episode of Ask JP program. What is this program? In a democracy, enlightened citizenship, reasoned public discourse, and continuous citizen engagement are critical. Oftentimes in India, there's a lot of heat without light. Our debates are hyper-partisan, uninformed by fact, uninfluenced by meaningful logic, or global best practices. The idea is to generate meaningful debate on fundamental issues of public importance and running our democracy and our economy. We, ran, we started this series some months ago in Telugu. It was a huge success. There's an increasing demand that we should do it pan-India with English as the medium. And therefore, here's your first episode of Ask JP. Please ask questions, post your comments and ideas, and come up with discussion on contemporary issues, unless we are collectively informed and assert in a responsible and constructive way, we cannot make a meaningful difference. And this must be beyond partisan politics, and it must be based on facts and logic and best practices. Here we go. Let's go to the first question. It is Revanth, high-tech person in VLS engineering. Yes, Revanth. Hello, sir. I'm Revanth from Hyderabad. I'm working as an VLSA engineer. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. So my question to you is, do we really require reservation in education in India? Or it should be based on the caste or religion? Or it should be based on the merit or economical status of that person or family? Uh, what's your take on this? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Revanth. Revanth's question is shared by many, many people across the country. You know, passions are roused. These are zero-sum questions. There is only this much in the kitty. If I get more, you get less. If you get more, I get less. Therefore, there's fierce competition. So typically, those who are beneficiaries of reservation because of the social groups they belong to, the disadvantaged sections who suffer discrimination that they belong to, those who benefit, they want it. Those who do not benefit, they don't want it. That does not help solve the problem. It must be done with a lot of understanding and creativity and innovation. First, let us recognize that our system, our society for centuries had vertical fragmentation. The birth distinguished people. We attributed merit to people by birth. We denied education to people which, who are believed to be low born in certain castes. There is systemic discrimination over centuries. Now, we have to do something to give them a space in our democracy. Otherwise, democracy cannot endure. The system must prove to them that we treat everybody equally, we give opportunity. But until opportunity becomes real, we must give affirmative action policies so that the handicap that they suffer will not become a permanent handicap that denies them the opportunity to rise vertically. That is the meaning of reservation. Dr. Ambedkar administered the reservation for some time. Initially, he said 10 years, maybe some more time. But the idea was that reservations are not a permanent solution. The real solution is giving equality of opportunity in the form of education, health care, and skills to everybody irrespective of birth. Forgetting that, we pretended as if a permanent reservation is a solution. Now, we have a unique case. Many sections of population which are under the reservation's umbrella, they're not happy because their lot has not improved. And even the paltry benefits of the reservation, they've only gone to some people, the first generation beneficiaries, their kids, they're the beneficiaries increasingly because they have education, they have economic status, they have awareness. Therefore, their kids can compete better with the poorer kids of the same communities. And obviously, they would take advantage of it. But the truly disadvantaged people, the poor rural people from various disadvantaged communities who get substandard schooling, though they are bright, their parents didn't have the benefit of education, they don't have economic status to go to expensive private schools to get good education. Despite natural intelligence, despite nature endowing them with a lot of talent and ability, 
they're not having much of an opportunity. Therefore, there's a lot of angst. The sections that are benefiting from reservation allegedly are not very happy because many of the poor among those and they're the bulk of the population. They realize that it's not really helping, it's only symbolic. And the sections that feel that they're not getting their due opportunity because of reservations, they're equally unhappy. It requires genius to make both sections equally unhappy. Obviously, we have to look at it deeply. The real answer is improving the quality of school education. Take China, irrespective of rural or urban, rich or poor, every Chinese kid up to eighth grade gets free education of very high quality, world-class education. China consistently ranks in PISA surveys on par with the best in the world because they made efforts. You don't have to be a super rich country. You don't even have to spend more money than you're spending in India. If you restructure education, if you make it our mission that every child irrespective of circumstances of birth must get quality education for 8 or 10 or 12 years, then a lot of the problems are overcome because irrespective of birth, once you get good quality schooling for 10, 12 years, these children, they're naturally endowed with talent like anybody else. They can compete equally with everybody. Then we can look at reservations, how to continue, what to do. And if we want to phase them out, how to phase them out without any pain. We are not doing that. Our school education is appallingly bad. Indian outcomes are among the lowest in the world out of the 74 entities surveyed in PISA, Program for International Students Assessment. India ranked second from bottom. Second from bottom. Our self-images were somewhere at the top. We are software workers, we are entrepreneurs, we are world-class managers serving all over the world. We think that we are doing very well. We are doing very badly. Only a small proportion of Indian children are getting decent education. 80% of the children are getting practically no education of any quality which is useful in the modern world. That is the heart of the issue. Once we do that, we can then simultaneously make sure that the first generation beneficiaries who are now very happy, they may be IAS officers, they may be ministers, they may be doctors, they may be high income people. We can humbly tell them, please take care of your children. Let your compatriots, your brothers and sisters from other families of the same community, let them get the benefit of reservations. If you compete with them, they will not have a chance. That's a reasonable case. Then about the poorer sections in other communities, there are some demands. Government of India has come out with a law recently. I think the Supreme Court has upheld that law. But that's more symbolic than substantive. Some amount of affirmative action for the poor in the other sections. But all this, you can actually address them and finally find a permanent solution only if you improve the quality of school education. That is the heart of the challenge. We have made a constitutional amendment to make education a fundamental right, but it's a symbolic thing without any substance. You don't have to make it a fundamental right to actually impart education. Just because you made it a fundamental right, education is not imparted. India is good with symbols, bad with substance where it matters like education. We have failed very badly as a governing system. We have to set that right. Good quality education available to every single child at school level, irrespective of birth, is at the heart of the issue. Do that, you will come to a stage in a decade or two when reservations become irrelevant. I hope we look beyond whether there should be reservation or not, this caste versus that caste realm, but how to fulfill the potential of every single child endowed by nature, irrespective of the circumstances of birth. That is the heart of the issue. Thank you for your questions. Please offer your comments, your criticism, and raise questions for debate and discussion. And let us spread the message. There's no final truth. We have to keep at it. We have to go by evidence and logic. We have to respond to emerging situations. And we have to understand the global practices and our own past experience. We have to find constructive and creative responses to our challenges. I'm a great believer, and as you believe, that there are rational, practical, acceptable, sensible, affordable solutions to most of our problems. But we must think of them very carefully, based on evidence and logic, with goodwill, without hyperpartisanship, without illogical approach, without excessive emotion or sentiment. And we must adapt the best practices relevant to our conditions. And we must learn from our own past experience, good and bad. I wish you all the very best. Thank you.